everyone, it's Julia. I've been working on another leather project this week, a little craft project, and I thought I'd share it with you. I am making these kind of like little boho tassels. I thought they'd be really, they have a, like a little lobster claw clasps on one end, and I thought they'd be really cute hanging off the, off the edge of a, a journal or a planner, um, possibly even like a zipper pull on a tote or a bag. You can also put it on easily, just um, hook it onto a chain if you want it, like a long kind of a necklace type pendant. I have tons of scraps of leather. So I've been making these leather kind of craft projects to add to some of my craft um, shows, possibly, possibly my Etsy shop. Um, it, but anyway, I thought I would show you just briefly on how I created these. They went together really slick. I have both black and the brown leather. I used a Tim Holtz Sizzix die called the Feather Duo to cut the, to cut the leather, or to cut the feathers. And uh, this particular die also came with a embossing folder which I thought was really cool so it actually is going to kind of gives the veins of the feather right right in the project and so I'm going to just demonstrate cutting the leather with my big shot but also embossing the leather with my, with my embossing folder through the big shot I'm going to lay the leather so that the right side of the leather is facing down on top of the die. And just making sure that the, both of the feathers are covered with the leather. And then making my sandwich. And I'm gonna go ahead and run it through. This is a little bit of work, but it goes through quite well. And snapping these out of the leather here. There we go. And then to go ahead and do the embossing, I like to lay the so that the, the right side of the folder is facing up. And then go ahead and lay these in. and matching it up and closing it down and you can kind of see if they're off a little bit this one needs to be moved over and then the next ne next step you really just have to experiment with what works for your particular thickness of leather I found for mine that I'm using my multi-purpose platform here for mine I, I can't use either of the tabs. And then I do have to use both of my cutting sheets. Oops, hang on, I got this moved again. And then it'll go through. And this really is a little bit of work. but it pops out and then you do have just a real nice I don't know if you can see it on camera or not but the veins show up really really quite nice even on the leather and to kind of get this to show a little bit more I've been using um, a metallic rub-on with my finger and just kind of kind of just putting a little bit of a color on the top of these feathers just a little bit to kind of really bring out that the vein look And that's kind of how they turn out. 
Next, I'm gonna show you how I attach these and some of the supplies needed to do this. This year, it's all about using up my scraps and things that I have on hand. And back in my scrapbooking days, I accumulated just a lot of little eyelets. And so this is what I'm using to basically get the hole um, in my little feather. I'm using my crocodile, and there's like a, okay, there's the stem of the feather. I'm putting the hole where there's a little bit more of the leather. So in just a little ways. Making sure that I'm not missing it and poking the hole. I love my crop crocodile for poking the holes, but I haven't quite accomplished setting the eyelets with this yet. And I know that you can do it. I just haven't taken the time to learn how. And so I'm setting the eyelets with an old old fashioned way with a little hammer, a setter, and then also a setting mat. And this is just such an easy, really an easy process. Just poking the little eyelet in the hole, turning it over, and then using this, the setting tool and just giving it a little whack. And there's the back of it and the front. All finished off very nicely. One more here. Poking it through putting the little setter tool on top and giving it a little whack. There we go. Both of them have the little eyelets in place. I'm using a large jump ring and a couple of pliers to attach the two. One of these feathers is a little bit narrower than the other so that one's going on top. Next I'm going to show how I did the little tassel on the front. This is just a sampling of my fibers and my yarns that I have accumulated throughout the years. Every time I go to a garage sale or a thrift store, that's what I look for because uh, people have little ends of left over from their projects and they get rid of them very, very inexpensively. And also anytime I go on vacation, that's I scope out I scope out the fiber shops or the yarn shops just, just for some unique items to add to my stash. And so I'm cleaning up some of my stash. And for these little tassels, I don't want them to get super bulky. And I kind of like the combination of three or four different yarns. And so I'm gonna pick out, oh, let's see, I think I'm gonna go with four four different ones here. Um, I want a color. Let's see if I can find. Maybe... Uh, let's see here. Maybe, the, maybe that one. I'm going to go with these four. And I'm not doing any measuring on this, but I say probably about oh, eight inches and then, I, and then I, actually, I, do, I do trim them down. another large jump ring for this and this is just a real simple way I know there's other ways to making tassels but I this is kind of the method that I've found works well for these just kind of taking the four different strands folding them in half taking the jump jump ring putting it through And then finding my center, which is right there, and then just doing a slip stitch. And I do have to, or slip knot, and I do have to kind of hold this jump ring as I pull this through. And then what I like to do is just take a little bit of white glue and hold the knot up, 
put a little dot right there and then um, make sure that this kind of goes over the glue and just kind of work it down and squeeze it. And there's my little tassel, real easy, quick little, quick little thing. And this gets added to my jump ring, which is still open. I'm going to go ahead and close this up. Oops. And trim my little tassel down a little bit here. And there we go. The final step on this is just to add the little lobster claw. And I have the lobster claw. I have another smaller jump ring here. And there it is. I just think they're turning out so fun and so cute. Um, the final step on this that I wanted to show you is how I'm packaging it. Um, just so it's easy for me to take to craft shows and or to, to sell in my little summer shop. So I'll be back with the packaging. I have a whole box of these tags. I got them from Paper Mart, which is www.papermart.com if you want to to get a, some of these. They're quite inexpensive through there, but you get like a huge box of them. So anyway, this is like six and a quarter by three inches. And I stamped it just really, really quickly using just distress ink. And these are both unity stamps. One, it says free spirit and then with a little arrow um, underneath it. And I put another little piece of trim on the top. I just thought this would be a, a fun then, And then not only do you get the little um, tassel but you also get a cute little tag that you can use for whatever you want but you, I can actually clip this little um, lobster um, clip right onto the fiber so it kind of keeps it in place and then the, the cellophane little bags that I also got a paper mark and this just slips right on in and it keeps it all together and looking nice and neat and this will be so easy to stick in a basket for a table. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this little project. Huge amount of this leather. So I'll be adding little crafts and sharing them with you um, in the next couple weeks. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.